Listen to the Tommy Schnermecker Show live weekdays 9 to noon on CJAD 800 and CJAD.com. You'll recall uh, last week I got a very uh, shocking letter from somebody who'd been to the Flurry Hospital, the experience uh, they went through. Carl, Carl sent me a letter about that. And since then, I've been receiving a, n- a number of emails about what is happening in the hospital system. And this was from uh, Diane, uh, who says, I'm pleased to tell you I had a very different experience last week. My husband was unable to urinate. He was passing blood. I took him to the Emerge at St. Mary's. Tuesdays at 7.30 in the evening, within an hour, they did a bladder scan. There was a catheter. They started uh, continuous bladder irrigation. Uh, Wednesday morning, a CT scan. He was in observation until Wednesday afternoon, transferred to a room, released Friday with a catheter, told that there's a problem. He should go to the Montreal General Emergency as they have the best urology department. Saturday afternoon, that's what we did. Got there at 5.30. They took him in immediately. Uh, They started the CBI, even though there was a woman having a heart attack and three ambulances that arrived before we did. 11.30, transferred to a room. We were very pleased with the attention attention we received at both these hospitals. St. Mary's was very busy at the time. In contrast, uh, the Montreal General was like a ghost town. They had only about 10 patients. The nurse says it's always like that when there's a hockey game. He was on the 11th floor. There are many empty beds, which surprised us. We're under the impression the hospitals were overcrowded. Everybody we talked to, everybody we came in contact with, was super, especially the emergency nurse at the Montreal General. I thought that you should know that sometimes good things happen in the hospitals. Now, that's true. It's very important to know that. And considering that we spend several billion dollars every year on the hospitals, one would imagine that there will be many good things that happen. That's true. Now, I saw something Uh, that I received from the Jewish General Hospital, I thought, I have to share this with you. Uh, It was a a news release, and it said, Jewish General Hospital breathes new life into the patient uh, experience. It says, staff at the Jewish General Hospital can help patients and their families deal with physical and psychological ailments, but if their actions lack a human touch, then the patient experience is compromised. And they have a quote from the new executive director. He's been there about a year, Dr. Lawrence Rosenberg. And I'm going to read you the quote. He says, increasing our focus on the patient experience is not only an initiative, but an opportunity. We're calling on all staff to work together to provide attention and care with a human touch, a kind gesture, a thoughtful word, an act of reassurance. They're not much when you think about it, but to each person, they can make all the difference between routine treatment and exceptional and an exceptional patient experience. Think about this for a second. They had to write a press release about this. To point this out, I've, I've been saying this for years on end, not only for the Jewish General Hospital, but every hospital. A kind gesture, a thoughtful word, an act of reassurance, of course it makes a difference. Now, the cost, let's run up the cost. The kind gesture, total cost, zip. Thoughtful word, how much is that? Nothing. An act of reassurance, nothing. That's why I said if they had volunteers in the waiting rooms, uh, they're at the uh, emergency or in other waiting rooms, just would you like a glass of juice, some water, or or just listen to what the patient is saying. Just hear the story. Listen to them. Active listening. That'll make them feel better. That'll make the patient feel better. And a pleasant word, a kind word from a nurse will change the entire experience. We know they're sick. It's not going to make these things. A kind gesture is not going to take someone who's seriously ill and make them well. But it is going to make a difference, a kind word to to the relative who's there. All of those things make a difference. And what it comes down to, rock bottom, is customer service. You regard the patient not as an obstruction, not as an annoyance. And 
if the Jewish general has instituted this policy, which I think is wonderful, calling on staff to provide attention care with a human touch, adding that human touch with that thoughtful word or kind gesture, I'm all for it, think it's a great idea. One of the things they could do right away, if it's still there in their emergency room, I don't know if it's still there, but if it is, that sign that said, thank you for not asking us how long it will take, that's not kind or thoughtful, and it's not an act of reassurance. Remove that sign. And they have volunteers, and my hat's off to the volunteers who work there. My goodness, at, at actually not only the Jewish general, but at any hospital, because the difference is mind-boggling. And they're volunteers, so it, it doesn't cost money. But that is the, the main issue. In many, many cases, when we hear about having to wait too long, there's a shortage of doctors, the doctor isn't there. When we hear about all of those problems and those issues, what makes it worse is there's a sense of annoyance and impatience. The, the staff is angry at the patient. Now, in some cases, it's understandable because they're, they're overworked. For instance, uh, very few people know that if you're, ex if you're a person who works at a hospital and you're very sick, like you have the flu and you're coughing and you're running right, right to the bathroom, you call in sick in many cases, they'll let you go. You can't do that. You have to come in anyway. Now, which is just mind boggling to think about that. Because there are people there, you know, with compromised immune systems. So there shouldn't be sick people in the among the staff, right? Because that'll make that will make things better. It'll make it worse. Lewis says, Tommy, you had an amazing guest on the German health system a while ago. Why doesn't Canada at least look at the German system? It seems to work amazingly well. Oh, oh that that's absolutely true. I, I had this guest. I think he was from out west in Saskatchewan. He's a, it's a consulting company, and they deal with hospitals around the world in, in every country, public, private, semi-private, every kind of hospital. And their attitude is... They look at it from the patient experience, not what's the, you know, neonatal ward like or how many chairs are there or uh, what kind of windows do we have. They look at it uh, in terms of for the patient, what would be good for the patient? What would be more convenient? What would be easier for the patient? Right. That, that, that's what they look at. So that kind of common sense thing, if, if that's where when, when you're sitting around the table and working for these institutions and thinking of what to do next, is this good for the patient or not? That's an important question. And uh, this new life into the patient experience gestures, a thoughtful word, an act of reassurance, what they describe, what the executive director describes as a human touch. That is an excellent idea. And I, an idea that is long overdue. We're discussing the patient experience. I just got this text. It says, good morning, Tommy. My daughter was an orderly at Lakeshore General. She's very compassionate and kind, was constantly chastised for spending a few extra minutes to rub an elderly patient's leg or back, talk with them and their families, etc. She's now quit her career and moved on. So there's somebody doing the right thing, making life a little easier. And this is what happens. Uh, another uh, texture saying how important this is. Spent three days at Hotel Dieu Hospital in intensive care cardiology. Not one person was surly or rude. The caring attitude and the health care made the stay much easier to, to deal with. Uh, Dr. Jeff on the line. Good morning. Yeah, hi, Tommy. You're very interesting. You know, it, it goes to what I've always said. You've heard me say it a hundred times. Customer service and Canadian healthcare are like oil and water. They just don't mix. But what, what is really important is the experience of the patient. And it's not just the care, it's the interaction on a daily basis, that extra two minutes. It's not 10 minutes or 20 minutes. It's literally two minutes that the patient knows that the doctor actually cares about them, that they're just not doing a job, that the nurse cares about them that the orderlies care about them. And frankly, I've been practicing medicine for more years than I'd like admitting. Don't even want to admit it on air. 
it really makes a difference in outcome. I am convinced. Oh, you're absolutely right. It does make an in, because your stress level uh, is and your level of anxiety is much less. So, of course, that's going to help. Uh, like I said, it's not a complete cure for everything, but it, it makes things better. You're absolutely right, and it doesn't it doesn't cost money. This one says, "I feel I'm more comfortable with long waits if I'm kept informed." They seem to be scared to tell us what's happening. That's because. There's an us versus them mentality. We're here. We know how this works. You're uh, an annoyance. When somebody comes up to the desk and they want something, they're not there because they're bored and have nothing else to do but bother you. That question is important to them. And if there's not enough money, you can't hire people to pay them for that. You can have volunteers do that that have an idea of what's going on approximately, how long it'll take, or it's a real busy day today, or there's there's a few cases inside there. Some people were injured. That's what the doctor's very busy with now. All that makes a, a difference. This one says, I, I, too, as a PAB, it's very true. If you spend too much time with a patient, you get a lot of grief from the nurses. So the attitude is like, what's the point of the operation? Like, why is the hospital there? Is it so that health bureaucrats can have something to arrange? Is it for the nurse to be able to have a job to pay her rent? Does it have anything to do with making a patient feel better and get better? Yes, it does. That last part has almost been forgotten. I talked about a couple of letters that uh, came in. I got one uh, today from uh, from uh, a woman who said she's very, Diane was very happy with the experience she had at the uh, Montreal General and at St. Mary's. And this was in reaction to uh, this incredible letter I got from Carl. I posted that up on my uh, show page about the horrendous experience he and his wife went to at the Fleury Hospital. And this texture says there are more Carls than Dianes. Uh, that's, that, that's for sure. Uh, another one, I think it's a great idea, but my question is what happens to the sour, disgruntled employee who continues to treat patients as an annoyance? After this policy uh, goes into place, will it just be a slap on the wrist or will actually something be done? Because personal experience tells me that many unionized employees don't give a damn about uh, patients. I don't think you can generalize. Uh, just like with uh, plumbers and teachers, there and nurses are the same thing. There are some who are fantastic, some who are average, and some who are dreadful, who don't belong in that, who actually hate the patients, who hate what they do and hate their patients. You have nurses like that uh, as well. And, you, and you've got to deal with them. And in many cases, they have quite a roster of complaints against them. And never mind a kind word, let's settle for neutral. In some cases, they're nasty and vicious and insulting to the patient and to the relative who's visiting the patient. That, that can also happen, depending, of course, on, on the institution. Join the conversation, what your experience has been in the healthcare system in the city. Text your comments to 514-800. Very interesting text. I'll get to the calls in a second. Irene says, my mom spent four days in ER for done. The care was wonderful. A kind word does make all the difference. Uh, they were there. It was a major breakthrough a few months ago. Must have cleaned up their act for the better. Asked if uh, French or English. Simple, but very effective. Let's go to the phones. Troy on the line. Uh, good morning. Hi. Yes, good morning, Tom. Yes, go ahead. Um, my, my experience was actually horrible. I, I woke up one morning coughing blood. I actually had pneumonia. And the closest hospital to me was Maisonneuve Rosemont. Now, I went there. At, this was at like 7 in the morning. And because I was speaking in English, the lady got annoyed with me. I'm coughing blood, and she's annoyed with me. You know what I mean? Right. So, so I said, this is not going to work out, you know. I got in my car, drove myself to the Jewish general, got there at 7.57. The lady saw I was coughing blood, took me in right away, chest x-rays. Long story short, they took very good care of me. I was out of there at 9.15, Okay. Wow, that is a good story and a bad story. I'm, I'm glad it all worked out for you. That business, as if you didn't have enough on your mind to bring up the language debate while this is happening. She, she's annoyed at that is is mind boggling. But, you know, we had a government for a while that actually encouraged that that kind of thing. In other words, aside from health, uh, you know, language w would come up and they'd lecture on you what you should or should not be speaking. Politics got involved in the healthcare system. Uh, 
Listen to this. We're going to end with this one, and this really is a separate subject. We're going to have to look at at greater length. This texture is telling me, Tommy, my daughter's a student nurse doing her stage. She had a fever and decided to go home, got a doctor's note, and was told by her teacher she would make a lousy nurse because of this. So, she's a student nurse doing a stage. She has a fever, realizes that's not a good idea for her to be there when she is sick because there are people there with low immunity. She's not trying to get out of work. She has a doctor's note. Then she's told she's going to make a lousy nurse because of this. But the nurse who is very sick and coughing and wheezing and showing up and coughing on all of the patients and making them sick, oh, that, oh, that's a good nurse. These are some of the issues in terms of how the whole setup is organized. News Talk Radio, CJAD 800, CJAD.com.